Welcome back. In this video, we're going to apply the concepts of maximum likelihood and maximum likelihood estimation in order to look at the origins of where linear regression actually comes from, this ubiquitous model we've been using so much. I'm going to focus uh, just on univariate linear regression, though uh, this sort of derivation easily generalizes uh, to any number of you know additional covariates. So to start with, consider this way of writing our, our basic linear regression model that says, uh, you know, yi, so some individual uh, y data point is going to be related to some individual x based on an intercept a0, uh, slope a1, uh, plus some error, where that error is distributed normally with uh, mean 0 and variance sigma squared. Um, so our first step is to kind of write this out in likelihood form. So the likelihood there would be uh, assuming that the errors are independent, the likelihood would be the product of the, all the normals of the probability of the data, y given the model, which in this case is the linear model with uh, these parameters for slope, intercept, and variance. And then uh, this is the exact same normal likelihood we looked at before in the previous video looking at uh, just a simple mean with the exception that you know before we had uh, yi minus mu and now we have yi minus our linear model so the a0 minus a1x uh, so that really is the only difference between fitting a mean and fitting a linear regression is going to be that we've put the model in there and you can easily imagine that as models get more complicated you know, most of the time what we're doing is just putting in a more complicated prediction uh, for the mean, uh, but the, the re remaining probability distribution is going to stay the same. And so a lot of the mechanics of what we're doing is going to stay the same for at least this distribution and their analogous uh, situations for other distributions. Okay, so we've got our, our likelihood. The next step is then to take the log of that likelihood. Um, so if we take you know, we've in this case already factored, uh, did some factoring. So we've we've rewritten this so that we take the the normalizing constant for the normal. And since there's n of those, we've just raised that normalizing constant to the nth, nth power, and we've moved the summation uh, into the exponent of the uh, normal already. So we've kind of dealt with that product. So that now when we take logs, we easily can see. Uh, that n goes out in front of all the parts of that normaling constant, and the exponent makes the, uh, the log makes the exponent go away, and we just have the uh, sum of squared errors uh, as a remaining term. Okay, so now we've got a likelihood very similar to what we've seen before, and our next step is going to be take the derivative, uh, set it equal to zero, and solve. But we have uh, an obvious problem that we now have three parameters. So where do we start? Uh, and, and honestly, you could actually start anywhere. You could start with any of the three parameters, the intercept slope or the standard deviation. Uh, I'm just going to start conveniently with the intercept. So we take our likelihood. We've already derived our log likelihood. So now we're going to take the derivative of that log likelihood with respect to the intercept a0. The normalizing constant doesn't have an a0 in it, so that'll go away. Um, and then. As before, we'll take the derivative of the whole parentheses, which will drop a 2 out in front, which will cancel the 2 in the denominator here. Um, we will then take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses with respect to a0. So that'll, you know, there, there's 0 from the y, 0 from the a1x, uh, and just a minus 1 from the a0, which will cancel the minus 1 out front. Uh, so all in all, this is progressing exactly the same as when we were fitting a mean. The only difference really is that this minus a1x happens to be tagging along. Um, so we're taking the derivative. We're going to now set this equal to 0 and, uh, and factor it out next. So set it equal to 0, multiply each side by sigma, and now expand that summation. So we're going to expand this parentheses so we end up with a a sum of y's, a sum of a0's, but we now have n of them, 
uh, and we have a sum of a one X's. Cool. Okay. Now I'm going to apply a, a, another trick to make the math a little bit simpler here. I'm going to actually divide uh, both sides by N zero divided by N is still zero. The sum of Y divided by N is Y is the mean of Y Y bar and a zero divided by N is just a zero and the sum of a one X divided by, uh, n is just going to be a1 times the mean of x because you can factor this a1 out and you just have the sum of x divided by n which is the mean of x so that gives us a simplified version here um, and then we can solve that from a0 and we actually get a fairly intuitive uh, solution um, which is the intercept is just what you would get if you took uh, the mean of y and the mean of x and solve your linear equation. Uh, so that's actually quite nice with the obvious problem that um, you need to know the slope. So that's our next step, the slope. Okay, so we go back to our log likelihood to get the slope and we're now gonna take the derivative with respect to the slope a1. Again, the normalizing constant doesn't have an a1 in it. Uh, Again, we're going to, the derivative of the parentheses drops the two out in front, cancels the due to the denominator, and then we get the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. Now, this is going to be a little different because while there's, you know, the derivative of the y is zero, the derivative of the a zero is zero, but the deliver of the a1x isn't just minus one, it's, the, it's actually minus x. And so the minus will come out front, but then the x will also end up in front of the parentheses. So we end up with uh, the sigma squared, sum of uh, x times the parenthetical value. So next I'm gonna uh, set that equal to zero. I'm gonna multiply by sigma, side, squ sigma squared on both sides to get rid of that. Uh, and then I'm gonna expand out uh, this parentheses. So I'm gonna end up with a sum of x times y, a sum of x times the intercept, and a sum of x times a1x. So that's just a1x squared. Uh, as before, I could divide both sides by n to simplify things to, to so that the sum of x times y is x, the mean of xy, uh, a0 the mean of x, and minus a1 the mean of x squared. So a couple important things to note here. Uh, first is that mean of x, y is, is most definitely not the mean of x times the mean of y. Those are not going to be equal. Um, and likewise, the mean of x squared is not going to be the, not going to be the same as taking the mean of x and then squaring it. So this really is, you're taking, in one case, you're taking the product of x and y and, and finding the mean of that. In the other case, you are squaring x and finding the mean of that. We solve this uh, now is actually the algebra for solving this for A1 is pretty straightforward. And we end up with a, a, a far less intuitive equation, A1 being uh, the mean of X times Y minus A0, the intercept times the mean of X divided by uh, the mean of X squared. Okay, so what to do now? We solve for the uh, intercept. It, turned out to be a function of the slope. We solve for the slope. It turned out to be the function of the intercept. Um, that's actually just you know, uh, now basic algebra. You have two equations and two unknowns, and you really just need to solve uh, for one of them. And I'm going to focus on the, the slope. Um, so if I take the equation for the intercept and substitute that in, um, I get uh, I take that a0, I substitute in the y minus a1x, and I end up with a mean of xy minus the mean of x times the mean of y. And remember, those are not the same. They don't just cancel out. And then uh, plus an a1 mean of x squared divided by x squared, the mean of that. Solving that algebraically for a1, we end up with this, uh, what initially appears as a pretty darn unintuitive uh, equation. 
related to uh, the mean of x times y minus the mean of x times mean of y, and then the x squared, the mean of that minus x, the mean of x squared. Uh, to put this, makes this a little bit more intuitive, though not fully intuitive, you can, um, can be shown that um, the numerator is another way of writing the covariance between x and y, and uh, the denominator is a way of writing the variance in x. Um, so you kind of think of it this way, and you know, the slope is related to the covariance, which is, uh, you know, a measure of how things co x and y co-vary, normalized by how x varies, uh, which actually is, it makes a little bit more sense uh, that you're looking at how these things vary together, and you know, kind of uh, standardizing that by the the way x varies. Um, I'm not going to take this equation a1 and substitute it back in to solve for a0 by itself, because honestly, the simplest thing you're going to do is to solve for a1. And then once you know that slope, again, once you know the slope, the intercept is easy. You just solve for the intercept based on the mean of x and the mean of y. Um, that's simple and intuitive. Uh, now, we're almost there. We're not quite done yet, because we have an equation for the slope, we have an equation for the intercept, but we need to actually also derive an equation for the standard deviation. Uh, fortunately, this is actually very similar to what we did when we solved the standard deviation or the variance uh, just of the mean itself, because um, what we have, the only thing that's different between this and that was what's in the sum of squares here, uh, but really that's not going to ultimately end up affecting how we derive sigma squared. So the I'll go through the derivation very quickly because we've seen most of it before. Uh, so as before, the minus n log n becomes minus, sorry, the minus n log sigma becomes minus n over sigma because the derivative of a log is one over that term. Uh, there's nothing, there's no sigma in the n log 2 pi. And then uh, we have a sigma to the minus two power uh, that then ends up being a minus two out front. It cancels the two and the minus two here. And we end up with a uh, sigma to the minus three power times the sum of squareds, set that equal to zero. Um, and as before, uh, we'll move things to opposite sides and multiply both sides by sigma cubed and divide both sides by n. And we get that our uh, variance is just uh, the mean squared error. And again, the um, standard deviation is just going to be the root mean squared error. And again, the only difference between this and the derivation for the mean is that the when the, the root mean squared error for the mean is just y minus mu, and the root mean squared error for the regression is y minus the, the mean that's predicted for each value of x uh, individually. So we need to invoke the regression model. Cool. So that basically sums up where regression comes from. It, it's honestly not magic. Um, the slope is a little tricky, but the rest of it is, is pretty straightforward. And it really was just a matter of, of solving uh, you know, the same general steps we talked about before. We wrote down the likelihood. Uh, we took the logs, we took the derivative with respect to each of the three parameters, the intercept, the slope, and the standard deviation. We set each of them equal to zero, and we solved. We had to do a little bit of algebra for solving two equations for two unknowns. Uh, when you generalize that to uh, any number of x's, you have to solve for a number of x's for simultaneous equations, uh, but um, there's a linear algebra way of doing that that makes it convenient and scalable so that you just need to solve it that way. And I won't go through the linear algebra derivation, but uh, it, for anyone who knows matrix algebra, it looks every step looks exactly like what we just went through just with matrix notation. Um, great, so hopefully uh, you got a better feel for the idea behind maximum likelihood. Again, we're just, we're, we're trying to find the parameters that are most likely to have generated the data and the basic mechanics 
you know, the analytical version of this really is just based on what you would have learned in calculus. We maximize something uh, by taking derivatives, setting equal to zero. Cool. And then from now, we'll from this, we'll move on to uh, more complicated likelihood examples where uh, this sort of uh, calculus-based approach is not so straightforward. And I'll also just point out that um, like much of my emphasis in this class, and, and particularly from this point going forward, as we get past a lot of pre-canned uh, solutions like LM and GLM, uh, the real emphasis is ultimately going to be on numerical methods for how to solve these problems rather than uh, focusing on uh, the calculus-based method. So should have stated this from the very beginning, the, the, the take home from this is not an expectation that one is, should be able to derive regression or regression-like model on their own, but to have some understanding of where it came from um, and to set us up for what we will have some expectation of mastery, which is some of the numerical ways of solving these problems. Thanks.